very much for making the effort to attend. This is the first fungicide that Corteva AgriScience is launching in 15 years. It's really an exciting time for us uh, to bring this product to market. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long journey and, and I'm really glad that, that all of you, are, lots of you have been part of it um, and lots of you are here to share the journey with us. I'm Rory Bain from SRUC in Scotland. Thank, thanks to Stefan for inviting me um, to take part in this presentation. It's a very short presentation and really it's focusing on ratings um, generated for Zorvec and Cantia from the Eurobyte system. Um, Eurobyte, for those of you who don't know, is um, an organization that's been going since 1996. It's obviously based in Europe and it's, um, it's a, a, a grouping that brings together independent researchers who've got an interest in potato lake blight, um, also with uh, industry members as well, such as Corteva and, and other, other, other companies. I'm Ruri Bain. Um, I've worked on potato lake blight oh, for over 30 years. Uh, my main focus has been on you know, epidemiology and control, so it's very much the applied end of, of, of blight research. SRUC, I should maybe say what, what that is, the company I work for. Uh, it's basically a, an organisation based in Scotland, which does research, consultancy and, and education. My role in it is basically to do potato blight research. I've been doing that for over 30 years now. The, the research I do is is at the, the applied end, so it's the epidemiology of blight, uh, control of blight, and you know fungicide control is obviously a, a, a really important part of that. One of the things that Eurobyte does is produce a, a late blight fungicide table, which essentially provides information to everybody. This table is on the internet, so the, the information is available to everybody. And really what it's doing is providing, you know, in, independent efficacy information on a large number of potato late blight fungicides, um, one, ones that are registered in Europe, uh, but obviously a lot of these fungicides will be registered elsewhere as well. You can access, I've given the URL uh, for the table, so you can, you can access that later and have a, have, a, have a closer look. I've stuck a couple of boxes over this slide of the table. This just shows part of the table. I, I've put a, a red box and a green box um, over, over parts of the table. And basically, it's to distinguish between what are actually ratings generated from trials, and I'll go into that in more detail, from scores which are basically derived by experts in a, in a Eurobyte fungicide subgroup. Okay, so you can see that there, there are ratings for leaf blight, ratings for tuber blight, and also scores for the important characteristics of, of the fungicide. So just fairly briefly what the whole system's about. Uh, the, the actual ratings themselves are generated from, you know, independent trials carried out by members of Eurobyte, some of the scientists who are, who are, who are part of it. And the, the key thing is that there's a harmonized protocol and the trials are done in different countries. You can see there, you know, the Netherlands, Germany, UK, Denmark. All of the trials are carried out using the same protocol. The fungicides are applied season long. They're applied at seven day intervals. And once a company has done six good trials, then a, a rating can be generated. And by a good trial, I mean, you know, <laughs> enough disease to actually get, uh, you know, good, good uh, separation of, 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 the, of the different treatments. So this is the table again, but this time or part of the table. And this time what I've done is to actually, according to the leaf blight rating generated for the different fungicides, I put the most effective fungicide in the system at the top, and they're then listed in you know, decreasing order of efficacy. Again, not all the fungicides are there, so there's a, there's a line with others on it. Um, but the key, the key point here is that the, the fungicide with the greatest rating 
is Zorvec Infantia, which has a rating of 4.9. And that's actually the same rating as some of the other Zorvec co-formulations. They all rate very, very highly for the control of leaf blight. One point I should make is that, you know, the maximum possible score in this uh, rating system is five, 5.0. Um, but that would actually mean that there wasn't even a single lesion in any of the six trials used to generate the, the, the rating. So five in a trial situation is obviously very difficult to, very difficult to achieve. And you can see that the, the, the lower point of the scale is actually is, is two, the lowest point. Um, that's for Mancozeb which is regarded as not a particularly effective fungicide um, against, against leaf blight. This is really just showing the, 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 the same or making the same point in, 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 a, in a different way. Um, but it's quite interesting to look at this. Obviously, Zorbic and Cantia, it's rating of 4.9. Mangazeb introduced, you know, around about 1960, it's rating only two. And you can see that the you know the fungicide manufacturers have done a really good job of producing more effective fungicides as years have passed. Um, you know the trend line there is 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 very much upwards, which is you know good, good for everybody, good for growers, good for agronomists. Um, that, that's all very positive news. I, I've been involved, as I say, in potato blight fungicide research since 1987. And basically, oxifiopiprolin, the active ingredient of Zorvec and Cantia, this is the most active fungicide active that I've seen uh, in, in, in those years of, of, of research in this area. It, it really is quite, quite a step forward. Moving away from the ratings to actually look at the scores, then, as I say, the, the, these are basically, it's, it's a group of scientists get together and decide, you know, from, from what they've seen from their experiments, um, from what they've, you know, from, from their experience of how the product's performing in commercial practice, they then rate products on a, on a zero to three scale. Um, so three pluses is the most uh, a product can get for these individual characteristics. And obviously zero is uh, no, no activity whatsoever. And th these are the characteristics for Zorvec and Cantia. And you can see that as far as the protection of new growth and the control of stem blight is concerned, then in Cantia has got the highest rating in the table. And it's as good as anything else in the table for antisporial activity and rain fastness as well. So, you know, a really, a really useful addition to the to the fungicide armory. Numbers are all very well. Um, you know, numbers on a slide, numbers on a sheet of paper. Um, obviously, they convey something, um, but but really, what matters is you know what what the, what the products do in the field. So you know, how well do they control control leaf blight? So just as an example of this, I've included um, a couple of slides. One from a, a product which has a, a Euroblight rating of 3.8, which is not a bad score at all. And that's compared with uh, Zorvik and Cantia on the right, obviously with its rating of 4.9. And you can see that the difference between the 3.8 and the 4.9 is very, very clear. Uh, there's a, a lot of leaf uh, death due to blight and leaves disappearing due to blight on, on the, on the left-hand side. So that's really all I wanted to say today. Um, I, I should acknowledge other, other Europe like colleagues because you know th this is not me running this system. It's actually it's actually coordinated from the Netherlands, from Frankeningen, and there are other people involved as well. Uh, you know, colleagues at Aarhus University in Denmark and the Technical University of Munich in, in, in Germany. Thanks, thanks for your attention. <laughs>
afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. If I can take your attention, please. All right, uh, welcome to, to this function today. My name is Darren from KFM, and we had to have some fun. We had to eat, we had to enjoy, and we also had to learn about the new product. And that's why we're here today, which uh, I'm told is a very, very long time in the making. It's very exciting. It's the launch of uh, Zorvik in Katia, and that's why we're here. And the main man, you know him, Stefan. Hello, Stefan. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. Molabatsi, thank you for getting us the registration on Monday. I was waiting to be pranked by this man because I was not thinking that we were going to get it before today. But this is such a great opportunity. Um, you know, we don't launch fungicides every day. Uh, this has been coming in South Africa for probably 12 at least years. Um, so what a great uh, occasion for us to, to be able to celebrate the launch of a new fungicide. I hope all of you enjoy it and, and thanks for being here. It's, uh, I, I'm already having fun. The tagline for the product is, this changes everything. And, and we've seen uh, from the presentation in the hotel this morning that this truly is a, a game-changing fungicide. And, and we're really privileged to be, able to, to be able to use a product like this that is just uh, head and shoulders above everything else that's in the market. So really looking forward to, to uh, many years of success for, for all of us with the product. So we're going to have a lekker socky jaw here for now. Look, we're keeping with the theme of the day. So your starters are already on the table. I want to welcome up the field sciences lead for Koteva AgriScience. He covers Africa and the Middle East. Please give a nice warm welcome for Dr. Rikas Kloppers. Hello, good evening, everybody. I thought I'll just give you a quick introduction for why we are really here. I'm going to talk about the problem and then, you know, give it over to Stefan just now to talk a little bit more about the solution. But it's really an interesting story, the whole late blight story um, caused by Phytophthora infestans, the fungus causing potato late blight. And I think a lot of you would know the history, maybe a little bit of the famine in the island in the, in the 1840s. It was such a devastating disease that it's still recognized in the history. And I, and I, and I think that's what I, I'm calling it. You know, it's history, but it's not just history. Because although, although this is a historical story, it's still with us. It's not history. We are still dealing with this problem every day and every year in, in, in the field. And for those of you who don't know Phytophthora, the, the, the fungus, it's a very interesting fungus, one of the seeds producing these oospores. And if you, if you see the name phyto means the Greek for plant, and then um, phytophthora, the last part is destroyer, and infestans is really saying a lot about this devastating infestation that took place over the year. That's, that's where the name came from. So uh, late blight in potato phytophthora infestans is not just a historical thing, but it also changed almost in pathology how they recognized that it is, uh, there's a there's a pathogen that caused the disease and not just an environment or something else. That's when they realize there's actually a microorganism that is causing a disease on a specific crop. There's a lot of lessons also to be learned from this disease. The fact that you can't rely on one crop as a food source. And we are almost a little bit in that same situation now with corn or maize, wheat, rice. We're really dependent on three big crops now. 
still in the world. And we can see it now in the war in Ukraine or, or Russia, you know, how dependent we are on wheat. And, and, and this was the same situation that happened there. It also tells us something else, that if you move a crop somewhere, you must just beware that the pathogen will follow you at some stage. And if you don't co-select with the pathogen, with the crop, it's also going to catch up with you at some stage and it's, and, and it's going to cause a big, big problem for you at some stage. So as I say, the disease triangle, very important. You can have the most um, beautiful crop, but if there's no resistance in that crop, obviously you can have a disease. But you also have to have the pathogen. So in this case, Phytophthora infestans. But the weather was the one that also then changed it. And those, those three don't get together at the same stage, you cannot get the disease. All three of them have to be there. The crop, susceptible, the pathogen, and the weather have to be perfect. But so over 150 years of studies of late blight in potatoes, and we still sit with this problem. So it's history, but it's not history yet. And it's probably one of the crops they reckon is the most intensive in terms of crop protection products. We have to solve this problem, and I think we have a nice solution coming up. It's one tool in the toolbox that we can bring up now. And I think Zorvac is really one of those products that, you know, you can work for years on chemistry and crop protection products, and then suddenly that one will pop out that really makes a big difference. And I think you will see that Zorvac is really one of those game breakers in, 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 in potato and, and late blight as a disease. So I'm really excited with this, just ending up this research part. And, you know, we've got some of the pathologists here in the room, Gloria and others that worked on this disease, doing the trials, some of the contractors executing on the trials. From my side, the research side, really want to thank you for your hard work on this, getting it to this point where we now can launch the registration is out there. All about see, thank you, this happened this week. Excellent timing, so I think that's great. So I think just everything coming together. We're looking forward to a great product. Uh, Stefan, thank you for that. So, you know, Zorvik was a journey for so many of us. Um, and, and it started in the R&D phase, and, and, and a lot of us heard about the product, and, 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 and this kind of excitement built. A lot of you people who are here tonight, you were part of the Brits journey. So I'm very happy that you're here. Where we started the journey should be on your screen soon. So, we are today in the Brits area, we have looked at the Zorvec proof. It is always nice to bring new food to the market. The Aardappel Bedrijf is a important company in South Africa. It is important in terms of food security, it is important in terms of work. And this is a very good product for Aardappels. We have solutions for plant lijsten in Aardappels, we have Klauser. We have solutions for Blaar Miner in Aardappel Mode with Delegate and Treiser. We have solutions for Latrus. We have solutions for Froeroos. So, we are actually very well positioned in the Aardappel market. And it is always nice to bring solutions to us. That is what is for us here. Yeah, so that was the start of our journey. And uh, Johan and Anna, you were part of that journey. You, you were there at the field day. So, um, and and at, that, at that demo trial, we did not have the greatest uh, infection pressure. Uh, we, we moved on to Christiana, and um, this will come onto the screen shortly, but uh, I want you to remember three things, and, and, and it was mentioned in this, in this clip was the rainfastness of Zorvec. It is really, truly one of the outstanding characteristics of the product, so just remember that, and then we, we can uh, roll on to Christiana, uh, where we had a, a very high disease pressure, and we had a fantastic trial, and Angeline, you were part of, of that trial as well, so yeah, nice to have you here. Hello everyone, my name is Gloria Mandiriza. I work with the Integrated Field Sciences as a principal biologist working on fungicides here in South Africa. And this is the R&D division of crop protection, Corteva AgriScience. And with me today is Franz, is Franz Roos, who's our trial consultant or trial collaborator here in the Christiana area. Franz, what do you have to say about what you see from this field? 
Uh, Gloria, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the trial that we did. We can see that the de disease has attacked in the control. You can see the destruction there and we can see on the, on the other side that uh, the product is working and that for us is important. So if I can just add on to what Francis said, here where I'm standing is the untreated control where no fungicide product was applied. And on our right, on my right side, the way Zovec Incantia active, uh, uh, Zovec Incantia was applied. As you can see, there are big differences in the untreated control. You see how destructive the late blight disease is and why we need to have a product like Zovec Incantia in the field is due to protect the crop and it has good residual activity and also better crop and better yield improvement. From, from Christiana, we moved on to Elans Bay um, and uh, we had a great trial site. Um, unfortunately, uh, just as, as we had fantastic results to show, a major windstorm came through there and, and destroyed our trial. But nevertheless, we, we still had some very good discussions and, and uh, in Elans Bay, that's the next clip, so take it away. How important is this to be able to keep the new growth protected from the water? Bram, this is very important. Um, yeah, the gemoedsrus that you have against your contact models, where you have a shorter interval and you have to spike. Uh, the system of the product lets you run to to be able to get up to the new growth. Um, and yeah, let you have a gemoedsrus and if this is the case, let you have a big interval Nie kan reik nie, maar maar as as jy as jy terrein of jy kan nie inkom nie, um, laat het vir jou beskerming op die nuwe groei nog steeds gee aan um, die langdurige werk. Okay, so I think and in the last part of our journey, um, we had a trial in uh, the Sandfeld area that Aubrey did for us and it was a fantastic trial and a really good trial site. Uh, we learned a lot from that. So this is the final clip, so take it away. Ons is nou hier so in die sandveld, lekker winderig en koud ideale toestande vir die ontwikkeling van Latrus. En dis lekker om hier rond te loop en te kyk na ons nieuwe product Zorvek en Kantia teen oor die standaard in die industrie. Um, Lekker om met die ouwens te praat in die veld en waar hulle kom en sê, luister hier, maar is so greid dat daar nieuwe producte op pad is. En die standardisme van hierdie twee producte of al hierdie producte wat later is beheer in een program. Wat vir my uitgestaan het hierso is juist hoe vinnig die product werk en hoe goed dit jong nieuwe groei beskerm. Ook as jy gaan kyk na die effect van laadroes op die stam, die tofter en veestand sal baie keer van die grond af opkom en in die stammekie eerste infecteer, dit het ons nou glad nie gesien waar Zorwek gespuit is nie. Okay, so, and then I think the final thing I want you to remember, so after the rain fastness, after the extra three to four days of control that you can get with that product under similar disease conditions, is the protection of, of new growth, even growth that was not present at the time of application. And that's why we want to position Zorvec at that rapid growth phase of the potato crop. We will get maximum benefit from it. Um, thank you for being part of this journey uh, where we are up to now. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a huge privilege to be uh, involved with a product like this. I'm glad that many of you could have been part of it up to now. And I'm looking forward to the journey as we're going ahead with this fantastic product. So, yeah, thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening. This is the man who's prepared all the food here. Jeff Johnny, give him a round of applause. I've been a lot of guys to work in Roger Federer and whatever models of noise to that this is for now. Let's see if it does after the movie. Every single thing we're doing each and other has got potato in it, right? So for the first course, it's quite a creative start and then we're gonna get into the meat eating. So we started off um, so, uh, potatoes of course is um vodka. Uh, vodka. <laughs> So it's, we literally took mashed potatoes and we made ice cream and vodka, no sugar. So we're gonna pour the broth, the chicken and leek broth, over the ice cream. But the potato, uh, the potato and vodka ice cream is rolled in crispy potato skin. Okay. For your second course, we've got potato gnudi. I'm guessing you don't know what gnudi is. Okay. So that's a ricotta dumpling made with potato, and that's got chorizo, which is meat. 
Sabi sa inyo, hindi ka nang happy. Hindi ka nang happy. Then we cut a... A loafa of smart slab rice brisket, which is the meat complement, which will satisfy your small brains. And thank you very much. <laughs>